In the game of baseball, there's an old saying, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. Unfortunately, that mindset has become part of our culture. Just think back to the last time you drove faster than the supposed to speed limit. I'm sure you had a good reason for it. However, you were taking an unfair advantage over those who were obeying the law. You were essentially cheating. When it comes to students and academic dishonesty, there are a lot of numbers thrown around. For an example, Bowman wrote in 2002 that according to one set of statistics, 20% of all students will cheat whenever they have a chance. 20% won't cheat under any circumstances, and 60% are the part of the battle for academic integrity. More recently in 2012, Angela Beldesere presented the results of a survey where it was reported that 84% of the students at a public research university believe students who cheat should be punished, yet two of every three admitted to having cheated themselves. Most of the cheating students admitted to involves homework, not tests, and they see academic misconduct applying differently to the two different types of work. I find this interesting because we tend to put more effort on preventing academic dishonesty on exams as opposed to homework. Often faculty and administrators are concerned that students may cheat more with online classes than with face-to-face -face classes. And in a series of studies, including one in 2012 by George Watson and James Suttle, they reported that 32.1% of the students surveyed admitted to having cheated in a face-to-face -face class as opposed to 32.7% having admitted to cheating in an online class. And though slightly more students admitted to cheating in an online class overall, for almost every individual type of cheating surveyed, most students admitted to inappropriate behavior in face-to-face -face classes as opposed to online classes. Now that we've taken a look at the research on how common cheating is, let's begin to focus on why students cheat. In 2005, Virgil Varvel wrote an article titled Honesty and Online Education. And in this article, he outlined several factors that lead towards academic dishonesty. Time can factor into causing a student to not be willing to put an honest effort into completing the assignment, and that can include looking for shortcuts and cheating. These factors include believing that an assignment is a waste of time, the student does not have enough time to complete the assignment by the due date, or the student has managed their time poorly. If a student has come to believe that cheating is an accepted social practice, then they are more prone to cheat. Also, if they become confused about the goals of education, has self-doubt about their abilities, or believes the faculty member would be reluctant to take action if they caught a student cheating, this can also increase the likelihood that the student would cheat. The pressure on students to succeed is tremendous. Some students must maintain a high GPA in order to keep their scholarship, financial aid, or even the support from their parents. Other students are struggling to keep a high GPA in order to qualify for the graduate school program of their choice. Finally, some students just want to graduate. When you combine the pressure to succeed with the belief that everyone else is doing it, then students begin to feel that they must cheat to survive. Some students do not cheat deliberately. They commit acts of academic dishonesty because they lack the skills to research information and decide it properly. Other factors include that they did not understand the assignment or they do not understand what constitutes cheating or plagiarism. There are many personal factors that can lead a student to cheat. The obvious factor is laziness but sometimes the thrill of challenging the system and getting away with something is a driving factor. Another factor is anxiety, often due to having a strong dislike towards group work or tests. The final factor is ease. It is like being on a diet and having a cookie jar in front of you with no one looking. No one will notice if you take just one cookie. What could it hurt? Who would ever know? 
Now that we have had this list of factors that tell us why students cheat, we can look at academic dishonesty a different way using a mathematical model. With a little work, maybe we can balance the equation towards encouraging our students to act honestly. A couple of years ago, I came across a presentation by a couple of faculty members from Utah Valley University. And in this presentation, they connected why students cheat to an educational theory by Howard McCluskey called the theory of margin. The theory is relevant because it focuses on how much energy and ability they have to handle tasks in their normal everyday life. And this theory represents the margin that a student has as a function of the relationship of load to power. Load is the self and social demands required by a person to maintain minimal level of autonomy and it comes from both internal and external sources. External load factors includes tasks relating to family, career, economic status, and coursework. Internal factors includes their self-concept, goals, and personal expectations. The power part of the function, which addresses the resources, abilities, possessions, position, and allies that a person can command in coping with load. The factors that can contribute to a person's power are physical, strength, stamina, energy, and health, social, ability to relate to others, mental, ability to think and reason, economic, money, position, and influence, skills, what an individual knows how to do. So how does this help us understand why students cheat? When a students lack the power to carry the load they have, they start looking for shortcuts to manage the load and to regain control. One of these shortcuts could lead a student to cheat. Therefore, we need to be aware of instructor-generated load. While we cannot avoid creating this type of load, we can manage the load we generate. Instructor-generated load tends to fall into four areas, attitude, behavior, task, and environment. We can negatively impact attitude when we treat our students as inferior or ignore their opinions. In addition, when we are too impatient with students or are too rigid with them, this can increase instructor-generated load. The most common instructor-generated load is due to our behavior, in particular when we are disorganized. When we assign tasks to students, we need to ensure that the assignments are appropriate and we need to explain the purpose of the assignment. When a student thinks we're just assigning busy work or we are not allowing for enough time to complete the assignment, this can lead to an increase of instructor-generated load. The fourth category for instructor-generated load is one we tend to have little control over, and that is the environment. When the network is slow or down, this increases a student's frustration. However, to do our part in reducing load, we need to make sure that links to other pages or outside of our course site work. As we design and deliver courses, we can think of this formula of margin as being equal to load over power. A great way to maintain an appropriate amount of load being generated is to align our assignments with our learning objectives and treat students with respect. As we mentioned earlier, when students perceive that you have unnecessarily added to their load, they can find more reasons to cheat. While students cheating is a serious issue, it is no greater an issue online than it is in a face-to-face -face classroom. As presented here, there will always be a subset of students that believe they have no other choice but to cheat to succeed. However, when we design assignments where the purpose and instructions are clear to the student, we minimize the student's temptation to cheat.